Good God bless America. Oh, good God bless America. So darn good. Sauerkraut season 2 episode 31. Today we're actually going to make some sauerkraut. I'm doing this not because my channel is named Sauerkraut, but because I recently read a couple articles that state that sauerkraut is really beneficial for your health. Now we already know that sauerkraut has a number of microbes that are really good for the gut, really good for the immune system, and that's why I think in these challenging times we need to think about getting more probiotics more sauerkraut in our lives. So, so today I was watching Daddy Group's Farm a Homesteading Story and he was showing how he had mixed white cabbage and red cabbage to make his sauerkraut. And I said, you know what, I have half a cabbage in the fridge of green and half a cabbage in the fridge of red. I can do this. And he said, if you do this, tag me in it. And so here I am. So Blake Kirby, I'm tagging you for the green and red sauerkraut. So here's what you need. You need a half a white cabbage, half a red cabbage. You'll need a plate and a weight. Today I'm using a white plate, a regular dinner plate, and a cast iron pan. You'll also need two to three tablespoons of sea salt, Himalayan salt, or kosher salt. Today we're using a fine sea salt. Right here I have two tablespoons of fine sea salt and the first thing I'm going to do is sprinkle about half of it over. Save the other half for the second brine. You may want to get some gloves. For me I do this because the salt dries my hands out and uh, gets cracks. So mix it in well. Try not to throw it everywhere. You'll notice the cabbage begins to glisten as it starts to release its water. All right, so we're gonna put the plate on top and then we're gonna put the weight, which is the cast iron pan and we're going to let it sit for 30 minutes. What this does is press on the cabbage, which then it starts to create its own brine. So 
though it's been 30 minutes, we're going to take the weight off and take the plate off and see what we have going on. Oh, I can already tell. I can already tell from how, how much it's glistening that a lot of water has come out. Remember, you might want to wear some gloves. Oh, yeah. So we're going to sprinkle the rest of the salt on there, mix it through, and we'll go another 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and take this off. Oh yeah, we're done. Look at all that liquid in there, and it's purple. Get some gloves on, mix it up again, and we're gonna stuff this into a quart jar. Believe it or not, all of this is probably going to fit into a quart sized jar, but if it doesn't, we'll use a smaller jar to finish it up. So, let's get this. Oh, and I'm using, I reserve my Bubby's pickle juice. And this is a spicy kosher dill pickle juice, so we're going to use that as a starter. We'll use a quarter cup. So, I'm going to put that down on the bottom first. That will get that ferment started. It'll also add something to the flavor, a little bit of a spicy kick to it. So I'm excited about that. I have a potato ricer pounder <laughs> that I use to pound into the quart size jar. Oops. That always helps. Okay, once it seems like it's filled up to the top, that's when you need to start pushing it down. And you'll see more brine come up. Remember, you don't want to fill it all the way up. You still have to have room for a glass weight to press everything under the brine. I'm just going to put a little bit more in here and then we'll get a smaller jar to do the rest. Okay, and what I have here are some cabbage leaves that I'm going to put on top. This is actually from my last sauerkraut that I saved, so it's inoculated with probiotics already. I put that in to help hold everything under the brine. And we're going to use a sour stone. A sour stone is a glass fermentation weight. We're going to put that right on top. And we're going to use a, an, an airlock. This is the same airlock you use for making beer or wine. Um, you also need to make sure that there's a rubber gasket inside your cap. So we'll put the airlock on. With a rubber gasket, air can't escape out the sides, neither can the fluid. The only way the CO2 can escape is up and through the airlock. We want to get some water in there. There we go. 
And I'll get the last of this into a small jar and everything will go over into the fermentation station. This sauerkraut has been incredibly active. It's pushed all the way up into the airlock. The brine is in the airlock. I had to put it in a bowl because it started overflowing. But let's see, can you see the bubbles right there? Yeah, there you go. I can't wait to eat this. Hey, it's about nine days later and I kind of rushed this, but it's warm. So I was able to see if it was ready and it was, and it is so good. Oh my God, look at how pretty that is. Oh, I'm gonna taste it for you. It's got a nice, let me see if you can hear it. Lord have mercy. It's so good. I could eat this all day. I might. Mmm. 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 Sauerkraut is so good for your health. It's great for the immune system. It gets those good bacteria in your gut working in symphony with your body. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe and comment and share this video. That's how I get my message out to the world. Bye-bye.